What's up, guys? It's Test Dummy 22, and this is Crate Junkies. So let's actually show some fucking vinyl, because everybody's been talking so much shit about Facebook, this, that, and the other. How we actually show some vinyl, because this is what we're all here for. Um, I was going to make a video. Um, I did this like little conversation thing where I talked about the situation we had this past weekend here in the VC, and I did a little video and an audio. I was going to kind of put it together and just post it. I still might, but uh, I think basically, just to sum it up pretty quick, do what you want to do. You know what I mean? Everybody just do what you want to do. Um, and I am going to continue to listen to awesome fucking music and share awesome fucking music. So that's what I want to do. So let's get on with it. Today I found first only CD I got today, Melvin's Stag, and uh, this was five bucks, um, mint condition, great, um, perfect condition CD um, for five bucks. Still has a sticker on it, which is pretty cool. And I'm gonna go see these guys. They're coming to uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania, which is about 40 minutes away from me. Um, at a place called the Crocodile Rock, and they're going to be there on the 27th of this month in about 10 days. So, man, I can't wait to go buy a record for 40 bucks and get it signed and turn it into a $300 profit. <laughs> um, no, I'm not going to actually sell it. I'm going to keep it. But anyway, here is the cool thing about this CD anyway. Uh, I'm trying to get all Melvin stuff on CD because it's so hard to get their vinyl. So I figured, why not look for their CDs? But this is uh, for promotional use, sale, other transfer, a gold stamped promo CD, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, plus, like I said, it has a sticker here on the front, and um, it's a really good record. I was listening to it on the way home from getting it, so I put that in upside down. But that's that's the record, and then there's the sticker. So that was cool. And then, oh yeah, I'll show you the CD too, just for the hell of it. It's not like white label or anything. It's just a normal thing, but it's pretty cool that it's gold, gold sealed, stamped um, promo. It's pretty cool, and for five bucks, man, you can't beat that. So let's get into some vinyl. Um, I don't know what I want to show, like the, the crappier stuff or the good stuff. Let's let's just get the, we'll, we'll make you wait through the crappy stuff. I'm not saying that any of this stuff's crappy, but it's more the lesser finds. Now today, I went out, I didn't spend barely any money. I think I spent 35 bucks on all this vinyl and you'll see it's pretty much and the thirty five dollars I've been trying to lately not buy new stuff. Let's 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 you know bottom line is is the name of this show is Crate Junkies. What are we here to do? Dig in crates. What's the point of digging in crates? Well to get vinyl for cheap and to find stuff that other people don't find. So that's what we're gonna do. You know what I mean? I'm you know gonna occasionally buy the new, you know, records that come out and Occasionally spend the twenty, thirty dollars on the rare stuff or whatever, but for the most part, I want to start digging into crates and start coming away with a lot of vinyl for cheap. And that's anyway. First thing we got is Leonard Bernstein, um, Shahrazada, Shahrazada, Zeta. Um. I see a lot of Leonard Bernstein stuff out and about. This is a New York Philharmonic, Monic, obviously, um, but this is one I don't see a lot, and I really enjoy this cover. I think it's a really nice cover, and, you know, usually if the vinyl wasn't so great, I probably would have passed this up, but since everything was cheap today, the vinyl is, like, mint, so I just had to get it just for the sheer fact that it was really cheap and the mint condition of the vinyl. If the vinyl would have been a little scratched up, I probably wouldn't have got it. Next one, we got Lenny Williams, an album called Changing. Um, not necessarily familiar with this. It looks, you know, kind of funk, disco-y, soul, possibly. Um, we are, this is 1984, so probably out of the disco era, but still a little funky soul stuff, probably. Um, not positive. R&B, maybe. I mean, you never know. But it was in good shape on this uh, Rockshire Records, which I'd never really heard of before, but 
and like I said, all this stuff was cheap. Um, I picked this up for my daughter who has um, her own little record player. I got to replace her needle, but she has like this portable record player. I got her at a garage sale. Um, I always see these Care Bear albums, but they're always beat to shit. This one is like super duper mint. I mean, it's like like it never was played before, and that's awesome. So I had to get that. Not necessarily just for her, but the fact that I grew up in the 80s, and, and that was something that was on TV a lot, and just the collectability of it. Um, this is some country. This is Roger w Miller, Little Green Apples. Um, I didn't know what this was when I first picked it up. Uh, I just thought that that cover looked pretty cool, and it looked interesting, and it looked like something that would be pretty cool. I looked it up, and I, I believe it is country. Um, I'm not too familiar with it at all. Roger helped revive Nashville's reputation of music during the years when rock was making its inroads. So I guess, you know, probably a pretty popular record here for a country fan. Um, not big in the country, but I'm probably going to spin it and check it out, see what it's like. This was one that I picked up sheerly on the fact that it was like this. Um, it's wrote, written on here in marker. It's just got a picture here. And it says farewell concert. Um, I don't know if it came in an actual sleeve or if this is how it came, but it is on MCA Records, and this is the Trap or Trape Family Singers farewell concert. I tried to do a little research on Discogs on this, and I really couldn't turn up much on this record at all. So. And I did a little research on the internet, and I couldn't figure out anything. So if you guys know anything about this, it has a picture here, and it's just, I mean, I don't know. I picked it up because it's really cheap. I mean, we're talking, you know, 20 cents a record here, so I'm not, you know, taking any risks, really. Uh, next one, this one I think I picked up before, a while ago. This is uh, the Imperials Believe It. I just thought it looked cool. It looked like some, you know, pop rock stuff and I'm still not sure exactly what it is it might have a touch of um, spiritual religious to it I'm not necessarily sure but I did look it up and it goes for a couple bucks in good condition and it was mint so I had to pick it up the, the copy that I picked up before at a thrift was really beat up so figured why not next one this is another gold stamp up there in the corner gold stamp and it's numbered it's a gold stamp numbered copy here of Ronnie McNear experience it is sealed it's it's missing a, like the seal part here and down here just there like up in the corner it's not sealed but I think that's because they had to stamp it so they had to take this off to stamp it which is uh so but it is still sealed so that was pretty cool, and I've seen this record actually on Discogs go for about 30 bucks in very good condition, So, and that wasn't even a gold stamp promo, um, so who knows, but I do know it is Funk Soul, or Soul Funk, it's classified under. Um, I don't know much more about it, I'm not sure if I'm going to open it, or if I'm going to just keep it sealed. Um, I showed these before, so we're going to get to the let's say, semi-good stuff. I'm not going to say any of this is super great. That stuff that I just showed you was from the Goodwill outlet, so that was Goodwill outlet stuff. This stuff, and I'm going to show you, came from my actual record shop. And then I went to a normal Goodwill and actually found some half-decent stuff, so here we'll show that. First, we're going to show stuff I got from my record shop, all in the $2 bins or the dollar bins. First is Dr. Dre, Dre Day single. Um, the only thing about this that's a little messed up is up here in the corner, there's like a bubbly type thing here. But other than that, I mean, I guess something got on it up there, but the record's in good shape. It's got the inner, well, it's not like, it's just a regular white inner sleeve, but the record's in really good shape, and it's freaking Dr. Dre. It's off the chronic. I mean, this is a cool thing to have if you're collecting hip-hop, which I am. Um, as a matter of fact... I'll save that for my next video. I want to do the Memphis Vinyl Gym, um, what what you're into or uh, what your obsessions. I want to do your obsessions, and I have an obsession right now. And I think um, a lot of the stuff I've been showing is kind of showing through to what my obsession is. 
and this will continue with my obsession, continuing with the 80s hip-hop and 90s hip-hop, and this is Night of the Living Bassheads single by Public Enemy. Fucking awesome. The only thing about some of these is the guy who had them was a DJ, and he put these on them so he could number his records, but I have actually been able to take a few off, and they come off and don't even leave a mark. All I need to do is heat them up a little bit with a, with a dryer, and they come right off. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to take my time to do it to all of them, because I honestly don't care, but maybe I will. Next one is another Public Enemy. This is Welcome to the Terror Dome by Public Enemy, 12-inch single. Next one is another Public Enemy. This is Public Enemy Night Train. Another 12-inch single out of the same collection. Um, another one is Brothers Gonna Work It Out. Anti-Nigger Machine. Power to the People. Public Enemy, obviously. Um, next one, another Public Enemy. Um, 911 is a joke, 12 inch single. Some really good 12 inch singles, man, to add to my hip hop stuff, man. Um, next one, Run DMC, um, Down with the King, 12 inch. Single, another Run DMC, Run's House, 12 inch single. Um, this is a full length. This is, this is uh, stuff I got from um, the Goodwill. This is Roberta Flack's Quiet Fire. Pretty famous record cover there. Rockin' the Afro. Roberta Flack. Amazing, amazing singer. Um, we got Quincy Jones, The Dude. Full length. These were 50 cents a piece. Great shape. Um... Some of these I'm going to ask, oh, this is uh, music from the Big Pink. Obviously, Dylan's on this. Um, not really familiar with the Big Pink, um, the movie, I think it is. I'm not really familiar with that. Um, this is obviously the band. Um, is it a movie? Or is this just... No, this is just a band album. See, I didn't know that. I'm an idiot. I thought it was, like, maybe from a movie or something. But it's the band, and obviously, you know, everybody knows who's in the band. This is my fourth copy of this Todd Rungeon album. The reason why I keep picking it up is I keep on finding it in awesome condition. And this is actually worth some money. Um, I have, I think, three copies. Now I have this one. I have one that was, like, basically brand new sealed that I opened. This one is in the exact same condition. It's it's amazing. I have three of these now that are in like great shape. If anybody wants one of these, let me know. I'll let it go for cheap or just on a trade or something. Uh, next one we got The Doors. Uh, what's the name of this one? Uh, what's the name of this one? Isn't this Strange Days or something like that? Yeah, Strange Days. The Doors, Strange Days. They also had a copy of The Doors' first album, but I think it was a reissue, and I was trying to not get... I already have that, so I figured I passed it up. I probably shouldn't have, because I don't have an original, and it could have been an original. Um, next one, this is one I've been looking for for a while. This is that, um, with a little help from your friends, Joe Crocker, and this is still in the shrink. It's got the original stickers on it and stuff. Um, really good condition. I mean, like, mint condition. Um, so I'm happy to get this because I've, I've seen this and every time I see it, it's always beat to hell. Um, oh, this is, this was cool. This is, uh, back to the stuff I got at the shop. This is the Haunted House of Rock. This is a promotional copy, not for resale. This is a 12 inch single and, um, it's two records. Now I think, to be honest, I think I got two, I don't think the actual 12 inch singles comes with two records. But, as you can see, it's got the Houdini, and it's on green vinyl. Really nice. And there's two of them in there. Obviously, for the D for DJ purposes. But this was this is really cool. For, like, I think it was like a buck. 
Um, next one, this is the, and I don't know these guys, the Loose Brothers, A Celebration, the Omaha Loose Brothers. It's got a little note here in the back that someone wrote um, to somebody. I'm not going to read it, but it's just like a little personal note telling them about a song on here that reminds them of a place that the person lived or something. It's always cool stuff with records, you know. This one I'm, I'm a little wondering about. This looks really cool. This is Dave Mason. The name of the album is Headkeeper, and it just looks cool. It just looks like one of those records. It's still in a shrink, really good shape, um, a mint condition, and it just looks like one of those records, man. It just looks jamming. I mean, it just looks like something that would just rock out and be like, you know, like a Nick Drake or something. I mean, I don't know Dave Mason very well. I've heard of Dave Mason. I must... Dave Mason, Mark Jordan, Dr. Rick Jagger, Felix Falcon, Falco. Dave Mason, isn't he in... He's in something. Isn't he in some band? I don't know. You guys let me know. You let me know. Next one. This is another one I don't know much about, but it looked interesting. This is uh, Shine On Brightly, Pro Cole Har Harum. Harum. I don't know, man. Just looks interesting. Doesn't it? Doesn't this look interesting? I mean, doesn't it? I don't know, guys. It looks fucking interesting. So, there's that one. Oh, yeah, and then there's this one. This is good. Um, this is the Cannonball Ad Adderley Quartet, Country Preacher, live at the Operation Breadbasket. This is on Capitol. Can't pass up some Cannonball. Fuck no. Check that out. And last but not least, we have Gun uh, Arlo Guntry with Shenandoah. Um... Outlasting the Blues. And this is still in the shrink. So, those are my pickups. Like I said, I got like all this for 30 bucks, plus that CD. And um, I did pretty good, I think. I mean, there's some really good stuff in there. I mean, nothing like to, you know, bat your eyes at and go completely ape shit over. But, you know, for the price, I, I could have spent, you know... I sometimes spend like 120, 30, 130 bucks or something and get like a little stack. You know, and I come home and I'm like, well, you know, it's good stuff, but it's like, you know, at least I only spent 35 on this. I feel good. And it's it's a bunch of stuff, you know, a wide <clears throat> variety of different <clears throat> things that I can listen to. So I'm, I'm happy. So, anyways, Test Dummy 22, great junkies. I will be coming with another video within the next day or two. Um, keep on digging. Peace.